If you've been following my live streams on the Phoenix Star YT channel, this shouldn't come as much of a surprise to you, but I am a massive fan of Arch Linux. The Linux distro that I've been using for quite some time now, uh, I've used this as my main Linux driver uh, for a little over a year at this point, and there's a really good reason for that. This distro is about as um, limitless as you can make a Linux distro. It comes with absolutely nothing out of the box. It doesn't even come with a um, graphical installer. And instead, all that you're getting is a command line that you need to install your entire Linux system with. And most, if not everything, that you're going to be installing on Arch Linux are going to be done through either the terminal or using uh, something like Pemac or something like that. That is still using pretty much the fundamentals of what a terminal does and makes it a little more graphical. This Linux distro is, uh, in that sense, incredibly, incredibly uh, limitless. Now, the only limits that you really have with this distro is your imagination. And I wanted to take that idea and have a little bit of fun with it. I wanted to make a series in which I take Arch Linux and I just take a base install of Arch Linux and make it into a really nice looking OS. So that's basically what we're gonna be doing. I'm uh, going to install Arch Linux on a virtual machine right here. I'm going to close these two tabs because I'm not gonna use them for now. Uh, if you're going to be doing this, I recommend uh, you install it on a virtual machine first before you actually try any of this on real hardware, by the way. So, we are booted into our live environment of Arch Linux and this is where uh, it really starts to get interesting. Right out of the gate, this is um, where it starts to get interesting. And um, honestly, you can do this in many different ways. Uh, there have been some people who made automated um, Linux installers. I know that Chris Titus Tech has one called Arch Titus, which I used pretty frequently in the past. I uh, really love it as uh, you can pretty much pick out all the packages that you, uh, that you really want. Uh, and um, uh, you can install a desktop environment from the get-go and all of that cool stuff and it installs everything for you automatically but nowadays there is an even better option so uh, if you are in this live environment you just go arch install and it is going to load up a more graphical uh, environment for the arch installer I say graphical but it's uh, more uh, uh, of a, it's, it is still very much command line based. But this is going to make things a lot easier for everybody who wants to get into Arch Linux. So as you can see, we have a nice little menu here with a bunch of options. And this is where you need to set up pretty much everything for your base system. So uh, let's start things off with the hard drives. So from here, you obviously need to pick um, what hard drive or what partition or whatever uh, you want to set, uh, install your system on. I'm going to be using uh, Dev SDA today, uh, which is a very standard uh, option for this. If you are using NVMe, chances are it will look a little bit different, but um, uh, this is um, what it typically would look like. Uh, so we're just gonna go Dev SDA for this. And then we need to select our disk Layouts. We can uh, do either uh, an each individual drive thing where you uh, can uh, create multiple partitions and um, just split the hard drive up like that. Or you can just wipe all selected drives and use a best effort default partition layout. This is what I personally would recommend for uh, newcomers to this kind of thing. So I'm going to use that. And uh, I'm going to use ext4 because it is tried and true for me. And ButterFS doesn't really have all that many... Um, added benefits to me, honestly. Uh, the separate partition for slash home. I never recommend doing this because it creates a separate partition, as it says, for your home folder, which is pretty much the folder where all of your stuff lives. So um, uh, I did this once with Fedora and I ended up with a 16 gigabyte partition, which was pretty much full after I installed like four programs on it. 
And um, yeah, you definitely do not want that to happen. So just don't create a separate partition for your home directory. Okay, so we have that. Uh, encryption password and bootloader, I'm just gonna uh, stick with the default. Same with swap and hostname. Uh, root password, I never do a root password and I don't really recommend it. It's just uh, going to uh, end up uh, causing a little bit uh, more clutter than someone would probably want in a Linux system as you would have to use two different passwords for everything that you want to do. One for login and one for installing shit onto your system. So I'm not gonna do that and I don't ever recommend anyone do that. Is that just create a super user which is basically going to be your administrator user. Uh, put in your username, put in a password. Uh, I put in a relatively short password so it's going to ask me uh, for uh, confirmation that I really want to use that password. And then you should see something like this. You have your username, your password, and then you have super user right next to that. Confirm and exit. And uh, then you can specify a user account if you want to use this computer with uh, a more, uh, more than just one people. Or if you're just gonna um, uh, stick with just one person, which is probably going to be you, you can just leave this option empty. Specify profile, and this is where you can choose whether you want to install uh, this with a desktop environment or if you just want to have a minimal install or you can even do something like a server install or XORG. I'm gonna go minimal because uh, it is pretty much going to come with absolutely nothing and I can customize Arch Linux as I see fit or as I'm comfortable with it. I can pretty much just install anything that I desire and um, I don't need to worry about um, a desktop environment adding too much clutter to it. For our audio, I always use Pulse Audio, uh, and you can also, what I find really neat is that you can install uh, additional packages with it. So if you uh, have a certain program that you really like and that you would want to add to your uh, Arch install out of the box, you can do that from here. I'm not gonna do that today because I don't really need any packages to be added to this. Uh, but I am going to configure um, uh, my network manager in here. Uh, but anyway, the additional packages is an option if you have uh, certain programs that you really like and that you would like to uh, get added to this. A UR helper is not an option, but we will install that later on. So once you have everything set up exactly the way that you would want it, you can hit the install button. And one thing that's neat about this is that I don't have anything um, that, I, uh, that I need to configure anymore from this, so I can just hit the install button. But if you still need to tweak something, uh, it will tell you that there is something that you still need to fill in or that you need to custom or that you need to change in order for the installation to uh, become complete. You cannot install uh, your system before you have this finished, so keep that in mind, all right? So we just hit the install button, hit enter in here. It will count down from five, four, three, two, one, and we're done. It is now going to partition everything up and it is going to install every package that we need for a base install of Arch Linux, which is absolutely incredible. So uh, I'm just going to wait for this to happen and uh, I'll be back once this is done. The installation is complete, but there's still one more prompt that we need to answer right here, and that is the ch root. So you can uh, perform some post-installation configuration. I personally don't normally do this. I actually, I, I never do this uh, because I always uh, trust that this is just complete out of the box, that I can just say no to this and that I can reboot then. Uh, if there are some things that you would like to um, uh, to change after the installation, you can totally do that. But I personally do, uh, don't do this and I honestly also never really recommend anyone do this. So anyway, we are done and uh, it now says installation complete without any errors. You may now reboot. So we do that. And uh, after that's done, we should be able to boot straight into a functional Arch Linux instance and it looks like that we actually are in a fully functional Arch Linux system and it we are yes epic 
So from here we can uh, pretty much do anything that we desire to do in our Arch Linux uh, system. Now the first thing that I would really like to do and the first thing that anyone should do is update the system. And I'm gonna uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, how you can do this kind of stuff and how this kind of thing works uh, in a future video. But anyway, let's update this and we can see that there is nothing to do because this entire thing is already fully up to date. Uh, because yeah, this is a uh, net install. So it pretty much just installed the latest version of every single package that you install on here, which is great. And uh, the first thing that I would like to do is um, install a little program called NeoFetch. And once we run that, you see that we indeed are running the latest uh, Arch install. We have less than 200 packages installed in the base install of Arch Linux. And we are barely running on 150 megabytes of RAM. Now that of course is going to increase a little bit once we have a desktop environment installed and once we have all of that stuff installed on here, uh, which shouldn't be too bad. Uh, we can just uh, keep that all as it is. We can just uh, leave all of that with us and uh, we can just have a bunch of uh, cool stuff around here with us now. This is just um, uh, the installation part of the entirety uh, of um, running Arch Linux on your system. There's a lot more to know, but we will get to that in due time. This has been a really fun video and I'm hoping this will be a really fun series to do. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you liked it, please do give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to Phoenix Star YT for more videos like this one. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm Colin from Phoenix Star YT, signing out, take care and stay passionate.